Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad. It's another day that was not promised. It's another day that the Lord has kept us. Sorry for starting so late today, having technical difficulties, so I won't be able to pull up. Usually I try to have our, our scriptures up and other stuff up, and I can't do it today, so I apologize in advance. Our broadcast is brought to you today by BA Mobile Academy. Uh, it's a new academy uh, we've launched in Ontario. Uh, if you want to learn how to get into live broadcasting, become an you know, engineer, uh, theater and arts and all kind of stuff, um, some wonderful things and classes and courses that we're going to be offering at the at the uh, Granada Theater, uh, better known as the uh, Inland Conservatory of Performing Arts. We'll be doing some night courses during the evening and on weekends. So if you like to learn about the arts and theater and business, we will be having some great courses for you there. So um, go to bamogulacademy.com. That's B A M O G U L M-O-G-U-L, academy.com. And you will be able to uh, um, see all the different classes that we're gonna be offering uh, starting in January. So uh, stay tuned, stay tuned, stay tuned. This is also brought to you uh, the venue that we're working with, the Granada Theater, is also have you there. It's a 550-seat uh, concert playhouse movie theater. So if you want to do your next movie filming, uh, film release, or you want to do a seminar, uh, concert, or play, or anything in between, uh, give me a call at 951-987-5145. That's 951-987. 5145 extension 4, and I will gladly help you. It's going to be at the Inland Conservatory of Performing Arts, better known as the Granada Theater in Ontario, in a great downtown area. So we are excited about what we're doing there and get ready for 2020. Um, Last week we talked about some stuff, and 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 now we're coming here. Last you know last week, if you know it was Christmas, and so we're coming into a new year. So this is the last Sunday uh, before the new year, and so I felt like and led to um, talk about uh, our year in checkup. And the title of our lesson today is testing, testing one, two, three. Testing, testing one, two, three. Is this thing on? <laughs> So what we're going to be doing today is going through the various, seeing if we're still in the faith and seeing if we're on track and see, because most of us in the new year will have New Year's resolutions and in those New Year's resolutions, we say we're going to do this, we're going to lose weight, we're going to get closer to God, we're going to do all these different things. And part of what we talked about, actually probably the underlying theme of this year is abiding in the Lord and, and drawing close to him and you can have whatever you ask and you'll get it. Um, I've been talking, you know, and, and because we're doing, you know, online internet ministry, uh, I've been led to talk about how we, um, a lot of us are not going to church. We, you know, great falling away because of just the, some of the negative things that happened in the church and in their lives from church hurt and so forth. And so I thought uh, today would be a great opportunity for us to talk about and, and, and reevaluate where we are in the faith. And so let's, let's, let's do it. So there's going to be three things we're going to talk about today. And I'm going to, let's go to, and I'm sorry again that we will not be able to put up the, the scriptures on the screen, so I do apologize. Uh, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 13. We're going to be reading verses 5 and 6. So before you go, or, you know, before you go there, let's pray. Father God in heaven, we love you because you first loved us. We thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for us. That last week we celebrated your birth. You know, we know that December 25th is not your birthday. But it's the day that we recognize you, to give your name the glory, honor, and praise. And we thank you for uh, um, being born and that you made the ultimate sacrifice. And we have life and have it more abundantly in you. We ask that you are creating us a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a right spirit within us. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts today, God, be um, our strength in you, our Redeemer. So strengthen us and keep us in perfect peace as our mind is stayed upon you. May we continue to draw closer to you. And in your word, and you will draw closer to us, that we have the victory in you. Uh, we love you again because you first loved us, and you sent Jesus to pay a price that we couldn't pay. Meet every need that is upon us today. Uh, may we have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, and we will be so careful to give your name the glory, honor, and the praise in your matchless name, Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. So, as I was stating earlier, let's go to 2 Corinthians Chapter 13, verses 5 and 6, starting at verse 5, it says, Test 
and I'm reading from the Amplified Test, and evaluate yourselves to see whether you are in the faith and living your lives as committed believers. Examine yourselves, not me. Ooh, that's good. that's so good. That's so good. That's so good. Let me read the rest of it. I'm come back to that, and then we'll get into the rest of our lesson. Or do not recognize about yourselves by an ongoing experience that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you fail the test and are rejected as counterfeit. And that's what we're going to be dealing with today. This is the underlying theme of our lesson today. But I hope you will acknowledge that we do not fail the test, nor are we to be rejected. Why? Because we are abiding in the Lord, because we're living a life according to him. But some of us have, are, well, as we go through this lesson, we'll see that we are of, um, that we have failed the test. And one of the things I wanted to pull out was in the middle of the verse, of verse 5, it says, examine yourselves, not me. And this is Paul speaking to the church of Corinth. And part of the challenge in the church of Corinth is that they, we're living carnal as carnal Christians at best. They still want to hold on to Judaism. They still want to hold on to things of the world. And Paul is saying, look, um, you examine yourselves. Now, you know, yes, I can see the fruit that you bear because it's supposed to be fruit inspectors and, and, you know, in, inspectors. And I know what you're probably saying is your brother Cochran, you know, that we're not supposed to judge anybody. That's not true. We don't have the right to judge if a person's going to hell or not. We do need to examine the fruit to see if they're bearing fruits of righteousness. And if not, as brothers and sisters of the Lord, the Bible says that if you're overtaking the fault, they that are spiritual, go to them with meekness and humility and to restore them. And I'm paraphrasing, but you get what I'm saying. And so the, 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 the thing about it is that if we don't look to help them, if we know that they're supposed to be bearing some fruits of righteousness and the Holy Spirit is going to bear witness with their spirit if they're walking right. So if they're not walking right, it's our, it's our, our um, we're supposed to, it's, it's our commission to be our brother's keeper and not to just let them go. So we are to judge them. We are supposed to help them. If we know that they're not doing right, they were supposed to help them. But if they're not, then the things are gonna happen. So Paul is saying here in that verse, I'll start from the beginning, verse five, it says, test and evaluate yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. And one of the things that I talk about almost every week since we've been doing the broadcast is that part of the challenge with a lot of folks today are doing online, you know, online service alone and we're gonna see through our lessons today the challenge of just being on your own and not being under a shepherd or pastor or a part of a church that one is gonna give you some things that you need. And so we're gonna get into that because one of the things that'll happen is that whatever you feed is gonna fuel you and you're gonna grow. And so if you, you feed less words, you're gonna have less word in you. If you feed more words, you have more word. You have more power when you have more word. And the Holy Spirit there is not as a comforter and a guide to teach you all truth but it's still up to you to listen and to obey. And so this is like the scripture is telling us that we are to see that we are in the faith and living our lives as committed believers. Because one of the things that I say again almost every week, especially this year, is that it's so easy for us to go to the altar where there's an altar call and say, hey, I want to give my life to the Lord. Because there's nothing, there's absolutely nothing that you have to do except for believe and confess. So if you believe in the Lord Jesus and confess with your mouth that he was raised from the dead, the scripture says you shall be saved, right? So um, we get that. But the the, the problem, the, the thing about it is, is he's looking for us to be committed to him and his word. And his word tells us to live a certain lifestyle that if we don't commit ourselves to it, then we're going to fall astray and fall prey to the enemy that comes to kill, steal, and destroy you and guide you and lead you to all falsehood because he's the father of lies and the truth is not in him. So you should examine yourselves not me. I don't need to judge you as a brother or sister of the Lord. You need to judge yourself or you do not recognize. And he's saying, look, do not recognize this yourselves by an ongoing experience that Jesus Christ is in you. So you should know by the fruit that you're bearing. You should know by the conviction that you get when you're walking in habitual sin. We're all going to fall short. We're all going to have, you know, we're all going to sin. But what should happen is as we develop our relationship with God, we should sin less. And as we sin less, we're being God conscious because we're walking in the spirit. So we will not fulfill the lust of our flesh. When we're walking in the spirit. That means when the temptation of sin comes at us, which is going to, that one, he'll give you a way of escape. And then it's up to you to choose that path for your escape. Amen. And so it says, go on in verse five, it says, examine yourselves, not me, or do you not recognize this about yourselves? And sometimes we got to do a self check. That's what we're doing today. At this, you know, at the end of the year, we're gonna we're gonna take on some New Year's resolutions. Most of us do, 
And one of the things that we must realize and must do is see that where are the areas that we feel that we've fallen short, see the areas if we're on track or off track. So we put that on the top of the list for next year. So that way, those are the first thing you attack are the things that you didn't complete last year because the enemy use that, keep that as a file and say, look, you're a loser. And, and that um, you see that you can't do it, see so you're not in the faith. And so he'll use these tools and things against you to cause you to fall even farther away from God in your relationship with him. And he says um, that Christ is in you. So when you give your life to the Lord, um, he takes a residence in you through the power of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit comes in you and he becomes uh, your teacher and your comforter. He'll guide you to all truth. Unless you indeed fail the test. And if you fail the test, the cool thing about our God that is if you fail the test, like we're talking about today, that he is faithful and just to forgive you from all your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness, all you have to do is repent. So that's the cool thing about it. So, or you reject it as a counterfeit. And then and the thing about it is if the truth is not in you, if you knew truly you went up to the altar and you, you confessed it, but you really didn't believe it in your heart, then you're a counterfeit. And again, it's not going to work for you. Now, the, the certain parts of the word will work regardless if you're saved or not. But the biggest thing about it is that your eternal destination is secure. If Jesus is not your Lord and Savior, then you're going to hell. That's, that's as simple as that. You don't have a relationship with him. You don't have a relationship with the Father. And you will reap the reward. Your wages of your sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So if Jesus Christ is our Lord, then you're not a counterfeit. But if he's not your Lord, you're not living the law. If you're not living, not the law, but if you're not living according to his commandments and his will for your life through his word, then you are a counterfeit. And then in verse six is, but I hope you will acknowledge that we do not fail the test, nor are we to be rejected. And so, and he's letting you know and encouraging us to let us know, and I'm encouraging you today to let you know that the hope that you have is in Christ Jesus, that you will not fail the test because God will never cause you to sin. Let me say that up front. So if, you, if you're if you sinning because you made a choice, but he's going to cause you to trial you to, 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 to get you to grow in your faith, to trust and rely on him more. So he's going to take you, allow certain things to happen in your lives or take you through certain things to build your faith in him and knowing that you can rely on that he is God and beside him is no, no other. And that your victory is in him. So today we're going to talk about three things to see if you are in the faith or, or and or on track of what you have done for you know what you have put yourself on track to do with your news resolution from last year to see if you're on track or off track. So number one, uh, again, our lesson today is called test testing testing one two three. And before we get into lesson, most of you know or if you don't know, I have a I'm a DJ and a sound guy and an MC, right? And so a lot of times when I, as well as a minister, but but um, as a DJ, when I when I go somewhere and I set up a sound system, one of the first things I do, even before I put on the music, I put on the microphone and, and I'll go testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, testing, one, two, three, and that's to check to see if the sound system is working or if there's a problem that I need to fix. And so today, testing, testing, one, two, three, and number one is do you believe? Do you believe? You might want to write that down. Do what? Excuse me. What do you believe? Yeah. What What is it that you believe? And let's go to our scripture for today. Uh, for this, for for our first scripture, actually the only scripture for number one is First John uh, chapter one verses five through seven. First John chapter. 1 verses 5 through 7 and today I'll be reading uh, from the from the amplified version today because it pulls out some things that makes it easier for us to study for today and again I do apologize that I can't pull the, the scriptures up if you're getting ready for church and getting ready to get out or you're just sitting around if you got your Bible pull it up um, use your iPhone iPad use your Android or whatever you got or if you people Bible save like like uh, what's that guy's name anyway it doesn't matter then you have your regular Bible which which is uh, Whatever, whatever works for you, whatever floats your boat, pull it up and let's get busy. So chapter first John chapter one, verses five through seven, starting at verse five, it says, This is the message of God's promised revelation, which we have heard from him and now announce to you that God, that God, that God is light. He is holy. He is his message is truthful. He is perfect in righteousness, and in him there is no darkness at all, meaning no sin, no wickedness, and no imperfection. 
verse 6 goes on and says, if we say we have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, meaning of sin, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we really walk in, you know, and this is from the Amplified, it says, if we, and then in brackets it says, really walk in the light, and in brackets again it says, that is, live each and every day in conformity with the precepts of God. As he himself is in the light, we have true unbroken fellowship with one another. Oh, that's going to be good for our number, part number three and one another he with us and we with him and the blood of jesus his son cleanses us from not so many not a few but all sin by erasing the stain of sin keeping us cleansed cleansed uh, from sin in all its forms and manifestations. And so we have to realize, number number one, it goes, it says, what do we believe? We have to believe without a shadow of a doubt. And if you start to doubt, then you have to check yourself to make sure, because you know, again, as I said before, that he'll never cause you to sin. His, his, his testing and trials that you're gonna go through um, are to build your faith, not to cause you to sin. It's to build you up, it's to encourage you, it's to show you how strong and mighty he is because he'll say, stand and see the salvation of the Lord. And it's when we are, are, are working with someone right now, and this is pretty apropos for right now, that there's a scripture that says, God won't put in us more than we can bear, which he won't. He'll give you a way of escape. He'll open the doors and make ways for you to escape. And he says, stand and see the salvation of the Lord. But the problem is uh, that a lot of us will put more into ourselves than then we turn around and we do things outside of the will of God. We try to blame God for what we do. So if we look at that verse, it, talk, it tells us that he promised to give us a revelation of who he is and how strong and how mighty he is and how he's infinite and, and powerful, and almighty, all-knowing, all-seeing, and which you've heard announced to him that he is light. And, and so in, in him, there is no darkness. So when you, what do you believe? Do you believe that is true? Do you believe that he is perfect in righteousness, that his ways are not our ways, his thoughts are not our thoughts, uh, that in him there is no darkness, no meaning no sin, no wickedness, and no imperfection. So if you have, if you sin, you can't blame God because you must believe that it's not him. And we got to look to ourselves and look to see who's the author and finish of our faith. And if he's not the author and finish of our faith, then we're leading to our own understanding because we're not acknowledging him in all the ways. And so he can't direct our path. And so because of that, then we begin to doubt because if we don't trust and lie, rely and believe that the word is truth, that the word of God is awesome and, and sharper than uh, you know sharper than a two-edged sword, that it's it's, it's going to cut in coming out. But if you don't allow him to cut and do spiritual surgery on us, sometimes then he, you know the, one of one of the things that I've learned, and that's it's not the word says it, but but it's what we say, and it's absolutely true that the Holy Spirit is a gentle giant, and because the Holy Spirit is a gentle giant, he will only he will prod us. He will speak a word to us. He'll send somebody to give us a word to correct us. But yet it's still up to us to follow suit to the correction. It's still up to us to follow the truth. And if we don't follow the truth, then sometimes after a while, um, it's like it's like one of those things where where I remember I had gotten a thorn in my hand once. A little, you know, and it was in my skin. And I kept trying to get it out. And I was doing something. I couldn't get it out of the time. And every time I would touch something on it, it it it, it, I felt it. Then after a while, I got used to it. And as I got used to it, then um, it no longer hurt. And, and I left it there. And it was like a week or so later, I was I was I was looking at my hand for something. I can't remember what it was. I was washing my hands or something. And, and I happened to look down and go, wow, that thorn is still there. That's like sin. That if we begin to practice sin, then, then the Holy Spirit will correct us. He will, uh, he will guide us. He will teach us all truth. But if we begin to not listen to him, the same thing is going to happen. After a while, it's going to become callous, and you're going to stop believing the truth and start believing the lie that it's all about you and not about God. But when we come to know the Lord, it's, it's no longer I, but Christ in me. And so I must decrease that he increases. But if you allow your flesh, there's nothing good dwells in this thing. So your flesh will reign as long as you allow it to. So... We have to know that he is perfect, that he is righteous. There is no darkness, no sin, no wickedness, 
or no imperfection because if you believe that and you stand hold to that then when you fail and fall it's not about him it's about us because he's giving you a way of escape and you're gonna hear me say this over and over and over again today because again it's a year in checkup and i want you to realize that some of the things that happened to us wasn't god it was us and that if we try to hustle i was talking to some brothers the other day and we we're talking about how um as men we were taught you know that by any means necessary we're supposed to make things happen but when we come into christ it's no longer it's no longer about me that he'll open the doors and he'll make a way so if i don't pray seek his face seek his will get into his word stay in his presence then he'll direct my path because he says if you seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto me but so if i don't seek him first in the wisdom and the direction that he has for me he knows he has our steps are ordered so if we are following him, then our steps are already ordered. So all we have to do is follow the path that he set for us. And then you'll never fail. You'll never fall. You'll never stumble because you're walking in perfection in him. Your righteousness is not of your own. It's in him. There's no weakness in him. So if you're doing wicked things, it's not him. It's you. Amen. And so we're imperfect. He is perfect. And that we're going to make mistakes if we walk in the flesh. If you walk in the, if you walk in the spirit, we'll do the things of the spirit. Amen. And then we'll have fellowship with him, and yet we won't walk in darkness or, or habitual. Now, again, we will commit sins, but we will not walk in habitual sin because why? We are walking in the truth, and the truth is in us. But if we practice not the truth, then the truth is not in us, and we are counterfeits, or we're not of God's you know, pasture, then we're walking in darkness. Amen? So number one, uh, what do you believe? All right, number two. Let me take a sip of this tea. Ah, thank you. This is a good one. Uh, number two, I'm testing, testing, one, two, three. Uh, what do you practice? First John, and we're going to be in First John today, First and Second John today, uh, except for the First Corinthians, but um, I found some great nuggets that will help us to understand if we're on the faith, because the same problem, he was writing these letters, Paul writing these letters to them, to let them to get them keep them on track to let them know that there's a way that seems right that leads to death choose life amen and, and that you don't have to continue in sin that grace may abound we come out of sin because we are we're trying to be pleasing to the god of our salvation amen okay anyway first john chapter 3 verses 3 through 6 from the amplified starting at verse 3 it says and this is how we know let me read that again and this is how we know daily by experience that we have come to know him to understand him and be more deeply acquainted with him if we habitually keep focus on his precepts and obey his commandments or teachings amen uh, verse 4 says whoever says i have come to know him but does not habitually keep meaning focus on his precepts and obey his commandments and his commandments meaning his teachings according to the new testament according to the whole book of the, uh, the whole book of, of the, the whole bible excuse me is a liar and the truth of his divine word is not in him verse 5 goes on it says but whoever habitually keeps his word and obeys his precepts and uh treasures his message in its entirety Ooh, I want to stop there, but I'm going to keep going. I'll come back to that one. In him, the love of God has truly been perfected. It is completed and has reached maturity. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. By this, we know for certain that we are in him. Whoever says he lives in Christ, that is, whoever says he has accepted him as God and Savior, ought to as a moral obligation to walk and con conduct himself as he is walked and conducted himself because we're supposed to be christians and being christ-like amen let me go back up i want to go back to uh the very beginning of verse uh number uh verse verse three in in verse john chapter two it says and we would know and this is how we know daily by day daily by experience let me stop there if we try you know one of the things that that there's a song that that came out probably 15 20 years ago that 99 and a half won't do 
right? And I didn't get it at first because when I, when that song came out, you know, I was newly saved. I was just beginning my walk in Christ. And, and it's one of those things that either you're a believer or you're not. And what happens is that God will show himself daily how awesome he is. And by the experiences that you have with him, you know that he is God and that he is the truth and that he is the way and he is the life, that you can't get to the Father but through Jesus Christ and knowing that he is perfect in every way, perfect perfect righteousness, no wickedness, no darkness in him, that he is the God that, that we want to serve. Why? Because one, he is that in all perfection. And two, it took a perfect sacrifice on the, you know, took the perfect sacrifice with bulls, dams, I mean, um, um, bulls, doves, lambs, pigeons, uh, uh, could not do the only thing that could be done the perfect sacrifice was Jesus Christ manifesting himself in the flesh took himself of, of, of a man divested himself of his of his um, not of his divinity because 100% God 100% man but he, he walked as a man walked to show us one how perfect he is and how he can walk without sin as a perfect example that through the power of the Holy Spirit then he can you know if he has a victory that we too can have a victory amen but we have come to know him and understand him more deeply and acquainted with him. Why? Because we trust and rely by experience that every day we see him more and more. But if you don't delight yourself in the Lord, uh, one, he won't give you the desires of your heart. And two, he won't work strong and mighty in you because you don't believe. And you're, only, you're still, he says, either you're, you're hot or cold, but if you're lukewarm, he'll spew you out. So don't be a lukewarm person. Be, be on fire for him. Know for sure that who he is and how awesome he is. Uh, because he is strong in mind. He has shown himself to you. And today, with our checkup today, you know, examine yourself to see the, the, the mighty things that he's done, to see where you're straying and where you strayed and where you missed the mark. And then, again, as we talked about and we'll talk about throughout our lesson this morning, is that you repent and he's faithful and just to forgive you. Just like he's forgiving me and will continue to forgive me because, or forgive me because I'm a sheep of his pasture. I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to sin. But I'm not, I'm not going to practice and live in habitual sin, meaning over and over and over again, do the same things over and over again, thinking that I'm going to get a different result. No, that's, that's the definition of insanity, that if I come into the full knowledge of Christ, to come full knowledge of what God did for us, my sending Jesus for us, then I'm going to live and know him more and more because the more I get to know him, the more I trust and rely on him, the more things, doors and ways he's going to open for me, and I don't have to do I, I'll still have to... I'll, I remember teaching, I think last year, uh, at the beginning of the year, I talked about tilling the ground and toiling the ground, I believe it was. And if you're walking in his ways daily, if you're, if by experience you're growing and knowing him and understand him, and you are more deeply acquainted with him, then he'll, you'll till the ground, meaning that you don't have to work hard. He'll, he'll make, he's already, he's already made a way. He's ordered your steps. And so because he's already done that, then all you got to do is walk in his precepts, walk in his examples, keep his commandments. He'll fight the battles. He'll open the doors. He'll make a way. He'll keep you in perfect peace because your mind is stand upon him. So when trials and tribulations and isms and schisms come, guess what? He'll open the way. He'll make the way for you to be in peace. He'll make a way to, to keep the enemy off of you. Why? Because he is your protector. He is your God. And he is your Lord. And you have, by through experience, you can trust and rely because from faith to faith, the glory to the glory, as you grow in him, there's going to be harder, harder things coming at you because as a child, you speak and understand and reason as a child. But when you become a man, Yes, you'll put away challenging things, but we talked about in the last verse that you'll be coming to maturity. And as a mature Christian, you'll see it coming and you'll know because the word is hidden in your heart what the word to bring up because you've professed it, you've lived it, you've testified it. I mean, you've, you've tested it and you know that it's true. So you can live by his word and his example and then you too can walk in victory. Amen. It says, if we habitually keep focus on his precepts and obey his commandments and teachings, that's what will happen that you'll have. He'll keep you in perfect peace. He'll he'll. He'll do the impossible because everything is possible through him. All things are, 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 are possible through him that believe in him. Whoever says, I have come to know him, but does not habitually keep focus on his precepts and commandments, his teachings, is a liar. And the truth of his divine word is not in him. And so, yes, there's false prophets. And there are those that think because we go to church or because we watch religious programs, because we got a Holy Ghost Bible and tithe, we got a you know, our, our, our Holy Ghost dress and, and so forth, that that makes us righteous. Well, our righteousness is as filthy rags. It will end us up and separate from God eternally. And that if we keep not his commandments, if we keep not his statutes and his precepts to his word, then you are a liar and the truth is not in you. 
and, and the thing about it is ultimately you'll be rejected. Ultimately, you'll be separated from God as you are right now. And you'll toil, you know, because, again, it, you know, it, 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 you know, there's a scripture that says what will separate us from God and it's ignore, you know, trials and tribulations, this and this and this and this and then that. Um, but you can separate yourself from God. And in Romans 1, 26 through 28, it talks about because you want to live the lifestyle that you want to live, he'll turn you over to a reprobate. And he'll let you go on and, and do your, you know, live the lifestyle, you know, of depravity that you want to live because he sent the Holy Spirit of promise. He died on the cross for you. His word reigns true. You read the word for yourself, but yet you rejected the word because you still want to live the ways of the world. Then the truth is not in you and you're a liar and that you truly did not, you truly were converted. And that's why, again, we're doing this broadcast because there's, there's folks out there like the, the ex-pastor that I believe was not baptized in the Holy Ghost, but I believe that he really truly didn't believe so he thought he could try 99 and a half and not give god 100 percent of him and by faith by faith through trials and tribulations you see that it works and see that he's strong and mighty and see that he's able to keep us from falling he's able to present us faultless that if we trust and rely in his word and his commandments and keep them then guess what it'll work but there's certain certain denominations and i'm going to name the name of the denomination the more than likely he is or was that they don't teach holiness they teach you you know that that grace is abound and that that you can live any kind of way once you confess but that's not the truth of the word that you still you walk in god's perfection that you sanctify yourself yes he did the work of the cross by sanctifying you sanctifying you sanctifying us unto him when we gave our lives to the lord but the bigger picture of that is that once you are saved then you live a lifestyle according to his precepts because we're called christian that means to be Christ-like. We're his disciples. So as his disciple, we're learners of Christ. And then becoming, as because we're learners of Christ, then we'll put away those childish things of saying, oh, I can just live any kind of way. That's not where he wants. That's not the best for us. And then if you watch these things on, on YouTube and Facebook and, and where it's saying that you can just live any kind of way, this, you know, that the grace abounds, that you can just do what you want to do. And God knows my heart. Yeah, it's foul, wretched, and you're a liar. The truth is not in you. So the cool thing about it is, and I'm not trying to be hard, but I am trying to be hard because it's one of those things where there's been a great falling away. And part of that's because we're, we we want to live in the flesh, but yet with the blessings of God of saying, okay, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven, but I don't want to make the sacrifice. We says, look, pick up your cross daily and follow me. And so if you're off track, then you stop picking up his cross. You stop working, you stop getting into his word. I'll, I'll tell you that if I look on your phone, if I look on your on your history on your website, I'll know if I look on what books are on your shelf and what has dust on it and what doesn't, um, I'll know if you're walking in the faith because you're going to nurture yourself and groom yourself and guide yourself and keep yourself as God word and, and all the great resources that are out there, all the books and videos that that will help you to walk the righteous walk and walk and sanctify yourself unto the Lord and not unto sin, right? He says, you keep his commandments and teachings, a liar, and the truth is not, a truth of his divine word the word now, that's what's so cool about that in, in, in this breaking this word down. It says of uh, his divine word. Because the thing about it is that the word becomes divine when you, when you, because you'll hear people say, oh, it's a good book. Other religions and other faiths will say, oh, it's just a good book. Well, it's not divine to them because they don't hold it in reverence. They don't hold it as in high esteem. They just think of it as great literature. And yeah, the, the literature is great literature that you can grow and get great wisdom from it. But if you truly abide, abide in him and his word abides in you, then guess what? You'll have fellowship with him and you'll stay focused on his precepts and obey his words. Why? Because you see that the word works. You work the word. You grow in your faith. You work the word. You grow in your faith. You work in the word. And you'll grow and have great success in him. Why? Because you've kept his commandments and his word. And he's going to show himself strong and mighty. He's going to glorify you and show folks how awesome he is in you because he's working in you. And that's the hope of glory, first and foremost, and knowing that we have our eternal, our eternal destination secure. But the bigger part is that he's going to make ways, and he's going to make folks jealous and use you to make folks jealous, to cause them, to bring them into repentance, to bring them into full fellowship. So it's important for us to realize that, that we are no longer our own. We have been bought with a price, and part of the sacrifice is to live a life according to his will, his precepts, his examples, and obey his, his word that he has in us. Amen. He says, but in verse five, it says, but whoever habitually keeps his word and obeys his precepts and treasures his message in its entirety. And that's, that's where I want to stop right there, too. In its entirety, I've, I've seen different supposedly Christian religions or folks that are believing in the word that say, oh, uh, Paul's you know, writings is this and, you know, and, and that they don't believe in the whole 
counsel of God's word and don't believe that God is sovereign, that God is holy and God is righteous and his word reigns true. Now, um, I've been watching some stuff on TV, on, on YouTube lately, and 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 um, we're going to do some apologetic stuff, I think, in the first of the year. We talked about that before. But one of the things that, I, that I've seen in, in more recent times is that that they'll pull out and extrapolate bits and pieces and say, this is the word only, and not take it as full context and wondering why it doesn't work and wondering why people are falling away is because if we don't take the word in this context, then we can build a case for anything based upon the ignorance of us and the power of the enemy because the enemy knows the word better than all of us. And so since he knows the word more than all of us, he'll take that word just like he did with Adam and Eve. He'll cause them to stray, cause them to doubt. And when he causes them to doubt and cause them to do it, he can cause you to sin. And so, one, that's not God because he's not going to cause you to sin. He's going to always cause you to grow and stretch you just like us lifting weights. You know, when you first start lifting weights, it's not comfortable. It hurts in most cases. You're sore the next day. Um, you're weak and your body's all trembling and stuff. Why? Because it's not used to that. So what happens is through your faith in doing the workout, you'll get stronger. It's the same thing with the word of God that before you go to the next level and pass the test, then you're going to have to get into his word. You're going to have to get into prayer. You're going to get into fellowship with others. They're going to hold you accountable. Then that's showing that you're eventually obeying his word and keeping his commandments because then that will show the fruit of righteousness that he wants us to have. So that way he can glorify us in due season. And ultimately you'll pass the test because you have a bit, he'll eventually treasured his word, his message that you've delighted yourself in him. So he'll give you the desires of your heart. Amen. But we got to realize again that we got to believe the whole word. And if we don't believe the whole word and you, Oh, that's what I was going to say that, that most of us, because we are not really thirsting and hungering after righteousness we just settle and so we'll buy certain translations because it's easier to read so let me say this the other translations the spirit of the word reigns true no matter what it's phenomenal it's not going to cause you anything but goodness right as you, you may go through trials and tribulations but ultimately it's for your good and it's piece of example is not going to cause you to die unless you die for him is gain anyway but if we don't go back to the original text, what happens is most of us study from the King James, use King James as a standard, and because the King James is a standard, there are some errors grammatically because the way we speak today is not the way they speak. So other religions will use that and say, look, this is what it says, but that, you know, and and and, and that's an error. No, God's word, if you take it back to Hebrew, um, Aramaic in the Old Testament, and then Greek New Testament, if you go back that way to read it and get the definition of the word, from the original text, then you'll see that it's pure, righteous, and holy. Yes, in the American standard and American, you know, all the, the verses that are that are, are King James and in American, you know, the NIV, the ABC, the one, two, three, and all these different translations, if they don't go back to the original text, and some don't, they'll go from King James forward. We don't speak that way anymore. And culturally, we don't, we don't, we don't act a certain way. But if you go back to the original text and see where they were acting then. And what they're saying and who they were talking to and why they were saying what they were saying then you'll get a better understanding of god's word so it is true in its own entirety so what will happen is as i said a second ago and i want to make sure i drive this point home is that don't let the don't let you got to be hungering enough that if you want to know the truth get back into the original text learn hebrew learn greek talk to your pastor uh, or join classes that are offering greek and hebrew there's tons. I mean, I, I, I wish I had time to bring up uh, I'm, next week. What I'll do is I'll or maybe I'll post something separate that I'll pull up a bunch of the resources that I use and, and, and have used and used. Um, one is oh, I got this one. Uh, I'll use this just to show you there's this. There's something called the, the concordance. And this is the strongest concordance of different verses and so forth. This isn't the Bible. This is the words defined going back to Hebrew and Greek. And so that way, if you don't understand a word, don't use American, you know, don't use American dictionaries. Go back to the original text and, and learn it from that way. And that's where you start using this, and then you get back into a lexicon or or get into learning uh, Hebrew and Greek. So that way, we have a better understanding. Because if you don't believe in the word in its entirety and you have doubt, then the enemy will use that crack to divide you and to to, to uh, get you to go astray. So number two is. Uh, what do you practice? If you don't practice to live righteous, then you're going to fall for everything. Amen. And our next scripture is 1 John chapter 3, verses 3 through 9. Uh, 
First John chapter three, starting at verse six, it says, no one who abides in him or remains united in fellowship with him deliberately, knowingly, and habitually practices sin. No one who habitually sins uh, has seen him or know him. Little children, meaning believers and dear ones, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who practices righteousness is uh, righteousness the one who strives to live in consistently honorable life in practice as well as in public or private, excuse me, as well as in public and to conform to God's precepts is righteous and righteous just as God, meaning a capital H on mine, is, is he is righteous. Verse 80 says, the one who practices sin, separating himself from God, separating himself from God, who practice sin, separating himself from God and offering him by acts of disobedience, indifference or rebellion is of the devil and takes his inner character and moral values from the, from the devil and not God or from him and not God. For the devil has sinned and violated God's law from the beginning. The son of God appeared for his purpose to destroy the works of the devil. No one who is born of God deliberately, knowingly, and habitually practices sin because God's seed, his principle of life, the essence of his righteous character remains permanently in him who is born again, who is born from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, and set apart for his purpose. And he is, excuse me, and he who is born again cannot habitually live a life uh, characterized by sin because he is born of God and belongs to please him. Man, I could preach a whole sermon just around that. But you get the gist of what he's saying is that if you don't practice, if you're practicing the word of God, you're practicing the kingdom, the, the kingdom principles and precepts and examples that are set for us in the Bible, then you will not practice sin. But if you're practicing sin, the truth is not in you, what we talked about before. So you're walking a way that is not according to God's statute, God will, God purpose for your life. And so you're not part of him. So no matter what people try to tell you that you're under grace, no. Yeah, you have grace. It is to empower you to walk away from sin. It's not to walk, it's not to empower you to continue in sin that grace may abound. It says, God forbid, or heck no. You're not supposed to continue in sin because if you love him, you will not practice sin. If you love him, you'll walk in his statutes. If you love him, you'll keep his commandments. If you love him, you do his will. If you love him, you do his way. If you don't love him, you won't do it. And it's just like, you know, and I say this every week, I will not cheat on my wife. Why? Because, well, first and foremost, um, she's from L.A. <laughs> and I say that all the time. Um, but the bigger part is that it's not pleasing to God. And that God gave her, I mean, gave me stewardship over her. That we we are joint, you know, joint together. We're we're joined at the hip. We are one in one. So if I'm hurting her, I'm hurting myself. And God told me to love her as Christ loved the church and gave His life for it. So I'm going to love her. I'm going to honor her. I'm going to obey her. Uh, does it mean our relationship is going to be perfect? Of course not. Does it mean the same thing with our relationship with God? Is it? Is it going to be perfect? Because no, there's going to be things that we're not going to understand. There's going to be things that we're not going to agree with. But his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. If he's perfect, if he's holy, if he's righteous, if he's omnipotent, if he's omnipresent, if he's omniscience, he is Jehovah, you know, he is uh, uh, Jehovah everything that we need him to be. Guess what will happen? That his ways, if you follow, are perfect. Now, you'll go through some things as you go through it, but if you keep your steps ordered by him, then as you go through trials and tribulations, again, as I said before, I'll say it again, that he will give you a way of escape, that you can't have victory. Why? Because the one who is born of God deliberately and knowingly and habitually practice, uh, practices righteousness. If you don't, then you're not born again. If you do, then you're truly born again. Because again, when we go to the altar, it's a heart thing. It's a belief thing. And, and so you can go up there and play the game and nobody would ever know because all you do is go to the altar and then he said, repeat after me. Do you believe this and this and that and this and that? Are you confessing and you do the prayer of salvation? But if your heart wasn't righteous, if your heart wasn't pure, if your heart wasn't uh, in him, not even because our righteousness our, our righteous is in him. So he imputes his righteousness and justification. He justifies us by faith in him that we're not justified and we're not deemed righteous when we don't believe. 
And so we can continue to go to church. We go to we can even go to Bible college. We can go to seminary school. We can get involved and become a pastor. And I talk about how the movie that that this pastor um, uh, it was like doing the movie the, the you know the, the moments after and the name of the movie is the moment after and where uh, the rapture happened and this guy was in the in the in the church sweeping the floor and and his man comes in and says hey um, what happened to everybody. You know, and, and he's telling you know how white, but that's the Holy Ghost anyway. But um, he stumbles into the church, and 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 the pastor says, "Well, there's something called the rapture." And he explained the rapture, and then the guy's like, "Well, hey, wait a minute, why are you still here?" He says, "Well, because I didn't believe." And and it's so funny because we always think about you know the um, the 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 members you know the, the, of the of the church that will that will be won't be working, won't be left behind, and, and won't be raptured up. And we think it, we don't never think about the leaders of the church because there's an expectation that they've taken that the the, the vow of righteousness to another extreme, to the next level, because they're saying, look, we're leaders of God's church, we're leaders, and in, 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 we're helping to help others make disciples, and help them to make disciples, and help them make disciples. And so we expect them to be at another level than they are because they they should have already, you know gone through the process to be deemed righteous and to be holy and go through the process to sanctify themselves unto the Lord. And they're practicing and watch, walking in habitual goodness and mercy and love and grace because we've made the choice to do so. But it's when we don't do that, when we deliberately, knowingly, habitually practice him, then, then we're not God's seed. We're not of God. We're not of God. We're not of God. We're still of the devil. And he just, he's, and, and you're in there stealing, killing, destroying because if you're in a church and you're not walking in habitual sin, and you confess yourself as a Christian, then other folks that are weaker Christians, guess what, may follow you. And if that's what you want to do, great. I mean, there's nothing we can say about that because the Bible talks about the two we can tear grow together. But God's going to hold you accountable for those folks that you let astray, especially for baby Christians that don't know any better. And so we have to stop practicing sin. We need to live holy, live righteous, and check ourselves to see if we're still in the faith. And number three was, number two was, uh what do you practice do you practice sin if you practice sin it's awesome god is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you by repenting amen and finally number three testing testing one two three how good excuse me how do you have oh, excuse me I, I read this i mean i wrote it wrong so let me remember how i wrote it how do you have a good, or do you have, there we go, do you have a relationship, a good relationship with others? That's what it should have said, and, and I, I, anyway, I auto-corrected, let it auto-correct, and I didn't pay any attention because I was trying to get it done, so I apologize. So, number three, do you have a good relationship with others? In our scriptures, 1 John chapter 2, verse 9, it says, the one who says he is in the light inconsistent fellowship with Christ and yet who basically hates works against his brother in Christ is in the darkness until now. And one of the things that I'm going to say about that is that if we are truly in fellowship with God, we're supposed to show love. You'll know his, but, but you'll, you'll know that they're a disciple when you show love one for another. I almost put that there, but I figured I, it, would, it would bring you know, Holy Spirit, bring it to my remembrance anyway, but you will walk in the light and that you will draw people to the light and not into the darkness based upon the scriptures that we've been talking about all, all morning long, that you will walk in habitual goodness, you will walk in habitual holiness, you will walk and keep his precepts, you'll do the things that are right and holy, which the biggest one is that the biggest commandment of love is to love God and, and then love yourself and then love your enemy as yourself and love your brother and your sister as yourself. And so one, you got to learn to love yourself and two, you got to know that if you are in consistent fellowship with, with Christ, but yet you hate your brother, then you are in darkness and not in light. Amen. First John chapter three, verses 15 and 16. And we'll be done with these scriptures after this. Anyone who hates, meaning works against his brother in Christ, is at heart a murderer by God's standards. And you know that, that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. By this we know and have come to understand the deep, the depth and essence of his precious love that is willingly laid down his life for us because he loved us, which is also in Romans. Um, and now we ought to lay down our lives for the believers, as well as unbelievers, by the way. 
um, one of the things that that we have to realize in in, in knowing a, a third a third um, aspect of of testing testing one two three is uh, do we have a good relationship with others? If we are not loving on others, if we're not you know um, helping others, then we will not have the truth in us, and that we don't have a relationship with with Him because God so loved the world that He gave. And so we too are supposed to give our lives as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, live holy and acceptable to God, which is our reasonable service. And our service is to serve others, the goodness of God, the love of God, and help them to see through our testimony, through our lifestyle, through our life, that we are living according to his word and that he is able to keep us from falling, that he is able to present us, that he is able to deem us holy and, and, and bless us like no other God or no other person could. He can't. So we trust and rely on his word because we know his word reigns true, and because we know his word reigns true, then we can ask whatever we want. So yet again, as I said earlier, and I'm going to say it one more time in our closing, that he wants to cause folks to be jealous of you. And the only way that happens is if you keep his precepts and examples. If you love him and walk in love, and in walking in love, that even your enemies will have peace with you. That he'll make you know, and so he'll make your enemies his footstool. But at the same time by loving kindness if you draw drawing them and the ultimate goal is maybe they're just having a bad hair day maybe because they don't have the truth that the enemy has has possessed them and oppressed them that your love through the power of the holy spirit that's living within you will bring them into a saving knowledge of him and ultimately that's what god wants us to do that it's easy er to agree with someone that agrees with you it's harder for someone that to, to bring someone to christ that doesn't agree with you and it's lifestyle evangelism. It's a lifestyle of love, and it's a lifestyle. It's no longer, you know, it's not, you know, it's not you just going to church and staying in your four walls. It's you going out into the hedges and the highways and killing, you know, letting people know about a man that knew all about you, and because he knew all about you, it changed your life. That you, <laughs> oh, sorry, that you too are there to help them because God first helped you. So, in our closing today, there are three things to see if you're on track. Or if you're in the faith and if you're on track, number one is uh, what do you believe? Uh, number two, what do you practice? And number three, are you showing good works to others? Are you treating others? How are you in treating others? Amen. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we love you because you first loved us and you sent Jesus to pay a price that we could not pay. The theme of our lesson today is to check to see if we're in the faith. See that if we're off track, that all we have to do is confess our sins and you're faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That your grace is sufficient to cover a multitude of sins. If we've walked in habitual sin and we realize today that we truly missed the mark, that we truly didn't believe, Lord, give us another opportunity. And we thank you that you will put our, our sins in a sea of forgetfulness and never to bring it us because there's no condemnation for those who walk in Christ Jesus. Lord, we thank you that we can walk in you that we can have strength in you, that we can have uh, what your word says that we can have. And that as you help us, that you send the Holy Spirit of promise, baptize them with the power from on high, that they can stand against the wiles of the devil, that they can speak with new tongues, that they have the strength from on high to help them to walk the walk, to keep to keep uh, them in perfect peace because their mind is stayed upon you because of the help of the Holy Spirit that's in them, that will reveal those things that are dark, reveal those things that are not of you, and that we can be faithful, that you'll open a door and a way of escape from all the things that may so easily beset us. So we lay aside the weight and the sin that has so easily beset us. And we shall run the race with patience. We'll look to the hills where help comes from, and help coming from you. We look to you, who is our strength and author and the finish of our faith. We deny our flesh today, and we live for you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you um, have listened to this lesson today, and you know you've fallen short, and, or you're not saved at all, and understand that it's not by religious act, but it's by relationship with Jesus Christ and him alone that you have access to the Father and a relationship that the Father wanted from the very beginning and that they have devised a plan that you can have that relationship, that he loved you so much that he, uh, Father God gave his son to be a sacrifice, that he died on the cross for us, that we may have life and ever more abundantly. And he did not come into this world to condemn this world, but by, by through him we might be saved. And so he wants to give you the opportunity that he's given me, and I accepted that call on my life. Is it easy? Not at first. It gets easier as I as I learn of him and eat of him. Then I learn when the enemy comes up to live up, you know, to to, to kill, still destroy me. 
and that he's giving me a way of escape. And then he says, stand and see my salvation. And so he'll he'll fight battles for us. And if he allows the enemy to come at us, which he will, is the trying of our faith to draw closer to him. So that way he can show himself mighty and that he can work the miracles in your life and that he gets the glory in your life, not you yourself, because you're no longer of your own. You've been bought with a price. So anyway, you're going to give your life to Jesus Christ. Um, pray this simple prayer with me and let's get right with him and have a fellowship with the Father through his son, Jesus. Repeat after me. Father God in heaven, I am a sinner. I believe on the death, burial, and resurrection of your dear son, Jesus. Lord Jesus, save me. And I will live for you forevermore. I thank you for this such great salvation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you just prayed this prayer, and um, I, again, I, normally I will bring up my contact information. Just DM me, and I have some great resources I want to get in your hands, some Bible studies and videos I want to get in your hands to help you with your growth, and then also reach out to me so I can get you plugged in. I'm going to be, you know, I am your temporary holding station until we get you plugged into a church that is living righteous and living holy based upon the, you know, and so what's so awesome about it, that when you go to a church, use this, you know, use this lesson as a as a, a standard to know if, if if this is where you're supposed to be because if they're if the pastor and the leadership are walking in habitual sin that's not where you're supposed to go if they're walking in you'll see by the fruit that they're bearing that they're showing love for another they're walking and in, in believing and walking in the word that they believe they're practicing the things that the word says and then they have great fellowship with those people that are part of the fellowship and so if those are the three things that, that those are the three things that, that we use as a standard to know if we're off track, but those are also the same standards in reverse to know if they're on track. So I want to get you plugged into a church that all those things are in practice so that way they can hold you accountable, they can love you and, and help you to grow and mature to be a disciple maker because ultimately you're not sit to save, you're sit to serve. And we need to get you in the, you know, the power of the Holy Spirit to get you water baptized, get all the things, the blessing things that come about as about, about being a full Christian. And we want to get those... Uh, to you. So DM me today, and I do apologize for not being able to uh, pull up our, our scriptures, and let me pray a benediction. Father God in heaven, we thank you. I pronounce a blessing over each and every viewer, each and every listener, Lord. We pronounce that they will have, the, 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 they'll become the seed of Abraham, and that you have an inheritance for them, that you open up doors and no man can close, and close doors and no man can open. As we go into the next year, Lord, that as we do our New Year's resolution, that first and foremost, we'll delight ourselves in you, and we draw closer to you ultimately in that because we've learned our purpose and walked in your wills and statues that you will give us the fat of the land and that you'll open doors that no man can close. You'll make a way that is out of no way and that you will present us faultless and that you will use us as an example of how awesome that you are. May we depart from this broadcast, but never from your presence. May the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide until we meet again. In your precious name, Jesus, we pray. Thank God. Amen. 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 Thank you all who joined in to the broadcast today. I see you. Wow, that's a lot. Praise the Lord. Uh, do me a favor, share this to others so that way they um, have an opportunity to learn about the Lord more. And, and God bless you. And we'll see you next year.